Okay, the first thing you want to do before performing a compression test is disable the ignition. You want to do this by unplugging these electrical wires to the coil. To the engine with no distributor, you want to disable the coil pack or the ignition module. You want to do this by unplugging these electrical wires here. Or another way to disable the ignition is to pull the coil, coil wire, plug it onto the spark tester, and ground it out. How's that? Next, you would want to disable the fuel injection system, but this vehicle is not equipped with that. On a throttle body fuel injected vehicle, you need to unplug the electrical connectors to the injectors. On some vehicles, to uh, disable the fuel injection, you pull a fuel pump relay or a fuse. Next, you want to pop up to the pump for an unrestricted amount of iron to the fuel. All right, right now we're going to prop the throttle open to a wide open position. What that does is that allows unrestricted airflow through the cylinder during our test. Okay, today we're going to hook the battery charger up to the battery to ensure that we have constant cranking speed. We're going to hook the red to the positive post and the black to the negative. You want to be sure not to touch any metal with the positive. Alright, right now we'll be uh, hooking up the remote starter switch. I'm going to show you where they're going to go first. Our black lead will be coming right here to the battery. And our red lead will be coming from the ignition switch wire. We'll fix it again. Let's do it again. Okay, next we're going to remove all the spark plugs. You want to be careful to make sure to remember which plugs go where and if so, if needed, to mark them. You also want to make sure you keep all these plugs in order. As you can see, we have marked all of our plug wires ahead of us. You always want to remember when doing a compression test to use a shredder valve. And on a cylinder leakage, you're not. You want to make sure that you securely tighten this in your spark plug holder. It will not give you a correct reading. We're going to turn the engine through four revolutions. The reading on this one is 170. Make sure that you hit your pressure relief valve on your gauge after it's set. Make sure that you write down your readings after each cell. on 
on this one is 180. Okay, right. So today we'll be performing a wet compression test. First of all, what you need to do is you need to lubricate your cylinder. And what that does, that seals the things. And just like on a dry compression test, we'll screw the holes in here. Get your gauge. Make sure it's securely on there. Use our remote starter switch here. We'll crank about four times. And as you can see in the reading here, it is about 185. And always remember to use your pressure relief valve. Use that pressure. Take it off. Take the gauge off. And unscrew the hose. And just like on cylinder one, we just did. We'll put a spoon of oil in here. The remote start switch. And on this test it is about 175. And that's pretty good. Pretty good. And press, press relief valve. Get your oil again. Like I said, that's the sealed rings. And just like we did the last two cylinders, we'll screw this in. Make sure it's snug in there. You don't want that to shoot out on you. And make sure this is at zero. Start this. And like I said again, this is about 170, 160. Do like we done last time. Press really well. Big cylinder. Stop it. The reason you do not do a wet compression test on a diesel engine because there's not enough room in the combustion chamber and it can damage your head or bend a rod. Go. Ready? Oh, you're sure? <laughs> Oh you my done? god. The reason you do not do a wet compression test on a diesel engine. Stephen, I'm back. Okay, I'm out here. Man, you gotta get over there. Oh, sorry.